Hello everyone, my name is Mariflor Garcia and I work for the Frontera Land Alliance. And my name is Kevin Floyd and I'm with the El Paso Trans Pecos Audubon Society. Today we're here at Rio Bosque Wetlands Park to talk about adaptations that anim animals have to desert conditions. Deserts are a very challenging environment for both plants and animals. They're very hot and they don't have very much water. There isn't a lot of rainfall here. And so plants and animals have to be able to deal with those conditions. They have to have adaptations that help them to grow and survive. Animals have an additional challenge compared to plants because they also generate their own internal body heat through metabolism. So in addition to just the hot temperatures, they also have to have ways to dissipate or minimize the amount of heat that they're gaining through their internal bodies. And there are two adaptive strategies that these animals can have. One adaptation strategy is the escape strategy in which an animal will live in a more favorable location, such as along rivers uh, and higher elevations. And the, the tolerance strategy is when an animal is able to endure the heat and dryness of our desert. And today we are going to be talking about how many of the animals that you find in our desert have adapted. Keep on watching. Now let's learn a little more about desert animal adaptations. Remember the two strategies, escape strategy in which animals adapt by living in areas with more favorable conditions, such as along water, underground, or in higher elevations. This is more behavioral. The tolerance strategy is when the animal is able to endure the harsh conditions through biological traits. This is more physiological. Now let's talk about the escape strategies. Many desert animals are crepuscular. That means that they are mostly active at dawn and dusk. Some examples are the mule deer, named after their very large ears, coyotes, the black-tailed jackrabbits, and birds like the black-throated sparrow. and the paraloxia. And of course, with lots of birds comes birders. Many birders will go out at dawn to get a glimpse of all the awesome desert birds in our area. Some more examples of desert animals that are active during the cooler times of the day are gopher snakes, which are non-venomous, curved bill thrasher, the antelope squirrels, the hare and the Harris hawk. Many desert animals are also nocturnal, which means that they are mostly active at night. And some examples are kangaroo rats, The striped skunk, which you see a lot if you live around the mountains. Burrowing owls, like the ones you find at the Rio Bosque. Bobcats, like this one that Kevin found at the Rio Bosque. And tarantulas. This one stepped out for a little sunshine. Híjole, it's so hot out here. One of the ways that animals escape the heat in our desert is by seeking out some shade, just like I'm doing underneath this mesquite tree. This shade helps me keep my body temperature down and it helps prevent me from sweating. So of course, seeking shade. Many animals will seek shade to cool down during a hot day. Some examples are lizards, like the side blotched lizard, antelope squirrel,
Rock Renz, Western Kingbird, and the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. And these are venomous. Many other desert animals live underground or in burrows to escape the heat. For example, rock squirrels live in burrows. Spadefoot toads will live underground most of their life until it rains. Desert cottontails live in burrows as well. And tarantulas. This one I found outside my house and I named her Dolores. And burrowing owls. Here's a closer look at burrowing owls in their burrow at the Rio Bosque. Now let's talk about tolerance strategy. Many desert animals are good at dissipating heat. For example, coyotes will shed during hotter seasons. Black-tailed jackrabbits and cottontails have large ears with blood vessels to radiate body heat. Great picture here. And many lizards like the Texas horned lizard have lighter colors. Another form of tolerance strategy is water retention. So desert birds and reptiles have evolved a very unique feature to help keep them hydrated. They excrete metabolic waste in the form of uric acid. So this process allows them to waste very little water and therefore they don't need to drink water as often compared to their map to mammals who use up a large amount of water excreting their metabolic waste. And here's a few examples of some common desert birds like the house finch, the road runner, and the white winged dove. Scales on reptiles also help keep them hydrated by reducing evaporation. And the scales on reptiles actually made the same as the, what makes up our nails, help retain moisture by shielding the body and preventing the evaporation of water through their skin. And it allows them to require less water to survive. And here's a great picture that shows you the number of lizards and snake species in the regions. And you can see there's a high concentration of species in our area because their scales allow them to be successful here. Water intake. Many desert animals will get most of their water through the food that they eat. Cactus pads are a major source of water for desert animals like the mule deer. So if you're ever walking on a trail, take a closer look at the cactus there and you might see a few bite marks on the cactus. And of course, the fruit is also a great source of water. Some insects also get water from nectar or sap and others will get water from plant parts that they eat, such as the leaves and the fruit. So which is the super desert animal? I would say it's the kangaroo rat. They live in burrows that, and they seal them off to recycle moisture from breathing. They have specialized kidneys that help them extract most of the water from their urine, and they can obtain enough water from the seeds they eat. And they are also nocturnal. So they're really great at surviving in our desert. And here's a video just to show you how much super these kangaroo rats are. Not today, rattlesnake. Thank you.